The movie starts with our main protagonist, Seth Davis, narrating his story about how he became a stockbroker as he's sitting in a bus, while his co-workers are partying, doing drugs, and playing cards. They arrive at a hotel, and everyone is in a frenzy as they seem excited about something. Seth narrates that he got into the firm, J.T. Marlin owned by a man named Michael Brantley a stockbroker, as he wanted to become a millionaire overnight. We see Seth siding with his co-workers, discussing a horse race on the TV. Michael gets up and demands everyone's attention. He tells everyone that they've been finally successful, and that it's time to celebrate and party. Everyone throws up a cheers, as the movie cuts to three months prior to the scene. We see a couple of shots of New York City, with the busy streets and the high-rise buildings. Two young men arrive at Seth's door and he gets up to open it. Inside, it looks like he's running a casino. Later that day, we see the place filled with young men betting and playing cards. Seth narrates that he's been running this casino as a side business to give the Queen's College students something to do in their free time while making a quick buck. At night when the place is closed and Seth is counting his earnings with his friends, two men walk up to his door and knock. Seth seems to recognize one of the men named Adam, and invites him and his friend, Greg Weinstein, inside to play a game of blackjack. Seth also takes notice of his sports car parked outside and compliments it. The scene cuts to the next day, with Seth arriving at his parents' house. His mother tells him that his father is furious for some reason, and Seth goes inside to meet everyone. Apparently, his father found out that he's dropped out of college and is running an illegal casino in his home for college students. His father is furious, as he's a judge himself and can't allow his son to do this. We see those two men back at Seth's place discussing about the future of his business. Greg suggests that Seth starts working for him instead, at his firm called J.T. Marlin, as his illegal casino is highly risky to run. Adam agrees, saying that he can make millions of dollars this way. Seth thinks about it, and in the next scene we see him driving to Long Island to join the firm. Arriving at J.T. Marlin, Seth walks around and sees hundreds of brokers, selling stock on the phone. A man takes notice of him, and tells him to get out of the room. Seth exits out, and finds out that he'll be attending a group interview with the other new hires. A man named Jim Young walks in, the head recruiter. After kicking two of the new hires out of the room, he promises everyone that they will make their first million within three years of working with J.T. Marlin. The firm's techniques of selling are through cold calling investors to sell stock. Jim Young pitches the idea to everyone in the room, and tells them to go home and think about if this line of work is really for them. Seth goes back to his home and sees the casino in full swing. He invites his father for a cup of coffee at a local restaurant to restore their relationship. His father tells him to clean up his life, and start earning an honest living. In the next scene, we see Seth arriving back at J.T. Marlin. The receptionist also introduces her as Abby at this point, and the two talk a bit before Seth moves on his first day at work. Greg walks in and he tells Seth what he'll be doing at work. He gives them a couple of cards and asks them to call each of these people, who are high-income, middle-aged individuals that are possibly interested in buying stock. Greg tells Seth that all he needs to do is sell the dream instead of worrying about selling the stock, and tell each of the clients that a senior broker will call them back in a day to discuss the deal further. Seth agrees, and goes home to tell his mom and dad about it, who are also pleased. Back at work, Seth is trying to make phone calls but due to his name and occupation, he can't get on the phone with the actual buyers and the call ends with the secretary. Greg walks up and tells Seth that he can be whoever he wants on the call, and that there is no limit. Upon hearing this, Seth is a little surprised and asks if there is no compliance here. Greg says that the compliance officer here is just for meeting the standards and that he doesn't actually do anything. In the next scene we see Seth with his family having a nice dinner. His father asks when will he take the Series 7 exam and become a senior broker, to which he replies after the training program is over. His dad starts to discuss the casino, which upsets Seth and he walks out to meet his friends. He drives to Greg's place, where his new co-workers are chilling and watching a movie. They all have fun for a while before the movie cuts to another day in J.T. Marlin. We see Seth talking to a doctor on the phone, trying to sell the idea to him. The doctor seems busy, but seems particularly interested in the stock of a drug which is about to get FDA approved and will be released soon, promising sky-high returns. Seth holds the phone and yells out Reco like he has been told to. A senior broker named Chris Varick rushes to his desk and takes the phone. He masterfully sells 2,000 shares of the stock to him, and closes the deal. The entire office starts to celebrate the win. Seth asks Chris why he limited the shares to just 2,000, to which Chris explains the business to him. 
In the next scene, Seth is attending a party held by brokers. He gets invited for a drink by Abby, and he hits down with her and the two of them start talking. Chris, Greg and Adam also arrive, and they start partying as well. Three other brokers start an argument with them, and it turns into a fight. Meanwhile, Seth and Abby are discussing personal matters and troubles that they have faced. Our other brokers get kicked out of the bar for starting a fight, and they walk away. Another day at JT Marlin, Jim Young is meeting with Seth and his co-workers that were hired with him. He tells them that all of them need to buy proper suits, in order to maintain the aesthetics of the environment. He tells them to act as if which means to act what you want to become, and for that you have to look the part. Next he asks them $300 each for their Series 7 books, which is coming near and will allow them to start trading as an SEC licensed broker. Seth walks into his co-workers moving all of the stuff since they'll now be working with the big leagues, a man named Isaac sold 30,000 shares of Ferrotech. In the next few scenes, we see Seth selling shares on the phone, and he seems to be getting good at it. The next morning as Seth is having a breakfast, he gets a phone call from Ron at Daily News. Ron tries his best to offer a subscription to Seth, but fails. Seth corrects him, and gives him another chance. He appreciates his efforts, but hangs up the phone anyway. At night, all of them are out partying again. Greg stumbles across a tough guy, to which his crew steps up. They beat the other guy up after he starts threatening them. Seth seems a little distressed as to how Richie enjoyed beating the other guy up. Greg also notices this, and tells Seth about it when he's driving him back. He also tells Seth again to steer clear of Abby, and that she's nothing but trouble. Seth tells him that it's good that he got out of the relationship with her. Greg drives off, leaving Seth in the empty offices. He notices the compliance guy acting a bit strange, but doesn't pay much attention to him. At the same time, we see the FBI is starting to investigate JT Marlin, and that they've selected Seth, figuring he is a good target due to his intelligence, and his potential of not being too loyal to the firm due to his short tenure. Back at home, Seth's casino profits are down by 40% ever since he left it running in the hands of his friend. Seth is furious, and calls to shut down the casino. Next day at JT Marlin, Seth just closed in his first sale with Chris by his side. As they are celebrating, Greg walks in and is furious for violating the SEC regulations as he's still a trainee. Seth suspects that his frustration is due to him getting close with Abby, to which he doesn't deny. That night Seth is looking at the JT prospectus, as Abby walks in. The two talk for a bit, before sharing an intimate moment. The next day we see Seth trying to sell Faro tech stock to a person named Harry. He's a little bit reluctant because he doesn't want to spend all his savings that he's been saving up for a house, but Seth successfully sells him 100 stocks anyway. Back at home, Seth gets a call from Chris telling him that he passed the Series 7 exam and that they should celebrate tonight. Later that night, Chris comes to pick Seth up. Seth starts to question the rip that they've been making on each sale, saying that it's way higher than what SEC has allowed firms to be making. Chris tells him that it's a wrong question that he's asking, and he shouldn't be worried about all of that. All of them drive to a nice bar and start celebrating. The next day Seth starts to take notice of Michael, the owner of the firm, and how he's been frequently visiting a nearby building. Seth decides to follow them, and finds out that they've set up another office there, just bare bones to get them to continue calling if in case things got out of hands and they had to move out of the original office. The next day, Seth has successfully closed his 40th account, meaning that he can start working for himself and not for Greg anymore. It's understood that he'll keep the 40th account, but Greg denies. Chris interrupts saying that he gave all his trainees the last account, and maybe he should too. Greg asks him to shut up, and pushes Seth after he realizes it's because of his jealousy towards him and Abby. As Seth and Chris are talking, Michael walks in. He congratulates everyone on the big month, and starts to tell them about a new product called the Med Patent. A retractable syringe that will become the new industry standard, and will earn them millions of dollars if they start getting investors on the track right away. The whole office starts to celebrate, as Michael tells them that they're going on a small trip. Everyone is excited as they get on the buses, arrive at a hotel and celebrate. The next day Seth takes a small trip to the Med Patent office, and finds out that there is none. He calls Abby and the two talk about it, how Michael is running an illegitimate business by selling stock for companies that don't exist. Abby tells him that it shouldn't bother him, as he's just a broker selling stock. We see Harry, the person Seth sold Faro Tech stock to, reading the newspaper back at his home. He reads about how Faro Tech stock has plummeted to a record low, and starts to get worried. Back at JT Marlin, Abby gets a call from the FBI, 
who met with her earlier and asked her to provide information on Seth in exchange for her not getting arrested. The FBI demands an update on the situation, and Abby is forced to comply. At the office, Jim Young barges in and is furious as Seth is the only person that has closed 40 accounts out of all the trainees. He lectures all of the trainees on how they can close in on each account, and walks out. Seth gets on a call with Harry, who's worried about Faro Tech stocking diving to new lows and wants to sell it. As Seth is trying to convince him, Jim Young walks in and tells everyone that the rip on Faro Tech is up by one point, that means they'll be making more money on each stock sold. Seth makes Harry listen to the frenzied environment of his office on call, and tells him that this is the moment to buy more stock. He convinces him, and Harry ends up using the last 50k in his savings account to buy more share for a company that doesn't even exist. Meanwhile, the FBI is listening in on Seth, and realizes that he's really good at what he does. Harry is having a quarrel with his wife for using up all of their savings on useless shares. Seth is meeting with father, who has now realized what JT Marlin is and calls it a chop shop. He tells Harry that he has lied to everyone yet again, and that he screwed countless people over making them no money whatsoever. Seth feels remorseful and deeply concerned for all of the consequences of his actions. The FBI wants to bring in Seth, but the man in contact with Abby wants to give it Abbott more time. Back at JT Marlin, Faro Tech stock is down by 86%, and everyone's getting crazy amount of phone calls from furious customers who want to sell and be out of it. Greg tells everyone that no one will be allowed to lay off their stocks. Isaac brings out a sell ticket to Greg, but he furiously rips it apart saying that no one is allowed to unload their stock today. Seth gets a call from Harry, who's extremely distressed and wants his money back. Seth tells him that there's nothing he can do, and hangs up the call. Seth goes to visit his father later that evening and emotionally explains that he shut down his casino and went along with a highly criminal line of work that he thought was legal in order to gain his family's approval. He then demands that his father help him with the IPO plan in order to take the money from JT Marlin and bring them down. His father initially refuses to participate in the scheme because he is afraid of losing his judgeship, but he calls Seth the next day and reconciles with him. He then offers to be involved in the plan. Seth is eventually arrested by the FBI for violating 26 SEC and NAST rules and was taken into custody with his father after the FBI discovered an IPO scheme based on recorded phone calls. If he agrees to fight JT Marlin, the FBI will grant him federal immunity. Seth only agrees to testify against the company if his father is released. He is assured that it will be the case, and Seth is held overnight. He has to act exactly like the FBI tells him to for the next day. He has to return to work normally, and use a floppy to copy all of the investment files to use as evidence. After that, it is implied that he will be free to go as the FBI will proceed to raid the building and prosecute everybody else. Seth returns to work the next day and follows orders from the FBI. Before leaving, Seth attempts to redeem himself for his actions and try to get Harry's money back. He tells Michael, the owner of JT Marlin, that the company could lose a lot of money if it refuses to continue doing business with Harry Renard, whom he portrays as a huge customer. Brantley agrees to proceed based on Seth's explanation and offers shares in the next IPO, but with the condition that they cannot sell the shares until the company sells them. Now in order to sell that stock and make back the money for Harry, Seth needs to sell all the shares behind Michael's back, and he needs a senior broker's signature for that. Seth asked Chris to sign, explaining that he may be doing the one right thing by helping struggling investors get their money back now that the company is under raid. The future of the business JT Merlin may soon be gone. Chris reluctantly agrees and flees the building to avoid federal enforcement. Seth walks to his car. As he drove away, several of his FBI cars, buses, and tote trucks were pulled into the compound, ready for agents to raid the building and the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss out any videos.